going to be going through what I found on burning glass or burning lens lenses there's quite a lot that I never even knew about um, let's go through it together so Wikipedia a burning glass or burning lens is a large convex lens that can concentrate the sun's rays into a small area, heating up the area and thus resulting in ignition of the exposed surface. Burning mirrors achieve a similar effect by using reflecting surfaces to focus the light. They were used in the 18th century chemical studies for burning materials in closed glass vessels where the products of combustion could be trapped for analysis. The burning glass was a useful contrivance in the days before electrical ignition was easily achieved. There's a replica of Joseph Priestley, who I'll touch on a bit later as well. Here's a, a modern setup, the Ordilio Solar Furnace. It's the world's largest solar furnace. It's situated in Fort Romeo Ordilio Via in the Department of Pyrenees Orientalis in the south of France. It was built between 1962 and 1968 and started operating in 1969 and has a power of one megawatt. The solar furnace can reach temperatures up to 3500 Celsius. It serves as a science research site studying materials at very high temperatures. And then I'm going to focus the light right on the rock. And you'll see how it just starts to melt. It's already been melting the rock, but it's going to it just turns it red hot and it melts it. Now, this particular rock is volcanic rock, so it's igneous. And when it heats up and melts, it's pretty much exactly like hot lava. And, and then when it cools back down, it it's like obsidian or dark glass. It's very interesting. So this is a demonstration of melting a rock with a Fresnel lens. You can see it's really starting to heat that up. A Fresnel lens is a type of composite compact lens developed by the French physicist Augustin Jean Fresnel. 1788 1827 but we'll show you that this tech is nothing new for use in lighthouses it's been called the invention that saved a million ships They're used in all sorts of things, like camera lenses, elaborate cameras, telescopes. But the thing I want to highlight is it magnifies. Excuse the pronunciation of this. Give me some gold stars if I get it right. Ewan Freed, Walter von Saturnus was a German mathematician. He introduced Saturnus transformation and is considered by some to have been the inventor of European porcelain, an invention long accredited to Johann Frederick Bocker, but others claim porcelain is, had been made by English manufacturers at an even earlier date. 
but it's his burning lens experiments we want to concentrate on. So I'm on Freddy. That's what I'll nickname him now because I can't say his name. The story begins with a visit of the Saxon mathematician and inventor Freddy to Paris in December 1701. He became a member of Academic in 1682 after he delivered a recipe for making white phosphorus. So, in 1682, they were working and doing experiments on white phosphorus. Phosphorus creates horrible burns. Uh, it will stick to your skin. It will burn through to the bone. If you cover it up with bandages, when you take off the bandages and expose it to oxygen again, it will flare up again. So you've got a weapon that creates particularly cruel injuries. So let's fast forward a little bit. So this is a car called... Lavasia. So, for 30 years after its recognition as a new element, a platinum resisted all attempts to melt it, first in the early porcelain furnaces and later by means of enormous burning glasses. Then in April 1782, just 200 years ago, Antoine Laurent Lavoisier finally succeeded in bringing about its fusion on a small scale by using a blast of oxygen, the gaseous element discovered a few years earlier by Joseph Priestley. Lavoisier repeated ex ex his experiment three months later before a most distinguished audience at the Academic Royal de Sciences in Paris. When European scientists first became aware of platinum in about 1750, they were much puzzled by its refractory nature and its apparent infusibility. Many attempts were made during the next 20 years to bring about its fusion, but unless it was alloyed or mixed with other metals of much lower melting point, such as arsenic or lead, these were invariably unsuccessful. After unsuccessful experiments with two older burning glasses, this enormous piece of equipment was provided to the academic royal de sciences by Lavoisier's friend, Jean-Charles Filbert Trudaine de Montigny. Installed outside Lavaux in 1774, it was used by a distinguished committee of scientists, including Lavoisier, but failed to achieve the melting of platinum. When a new phase of activity with large burning glasses sets in under the auspices of the academic royal de sciences in Paris, this arose from the argument as to whether a diamond, when exposed to strong heat, would be destroyed, destroyed by evaporation or by combustion, and the latter would present presence of air be necessary. After a number of indecisive experiments by Mercure, together with Louis Claude Cadet and Anton Laurent Lavoisier, in which the diamonds were heated in, in both the presence and absence of air, it was decided to ask permission from the academic to make use of a great burning glass that had been kept there as a curiosity for over 50 years. So obviously referring to our man Freddie, the pioneer of the burning glass, who was a rich German nobleman who had devoted some of his great wealth to building a glass works on his estate and who had spent some years in Dresden at the court of Augustus the Strong.
In July 1772, Cadet, with the support of a physicist, Morphrin Jack Sprissin, asked for the use of the great lens. Bear with me on this part. It, it's going to seem boring, but it is relevant to what will come after this. So it was just at this time of the year that Lavisseau had come to the conclusion that air, or some con constituent of air, played an important role in the process of calcination of metals and in combustion, so breaking them down, melting. Joseph Priestley was an English chemist, natural philosopher, multi-subject educator and liberal political theorist who published over 150 works. Basically this guy, the guy who is credited, he has historically been credited with the independent discovery of oxygen in 1774 by thermal decomp decomposition of mercuric oxide having isolated it so basically isolated oxygen again bear with me it will become relevant very soon so at the very time that this unweirdly piece of equipment was being erected outside the Lavore there arrived in Paris two visitors from England one of whom was to have profound effect upon Lavoisier's thinking and his future researches. One was the Earl of Shelbourne, a young Whig politician who had been a member of Pitt's cabinet, but who was now out of office on account of his sympathy with the American colonists, with whom he brought his recently appointed librarian and companion, Joseph Priestley. Monday, August the 1st, 1774, is probably the best remembered date in all history of chemistry. On that day, Priestley first isolated oxygen by heating mercurous calinitus, mercuric oxide, by means of, bur of, of a burning glass, only some 12 inches in diameter, given to him by John Parker, the instrument, ma the instrument maker of Fleet Street in London. This classic experiment was performed in Lord Shelburne's home, Bowood House at Cowan in Wiltshire, and Pri Priestley did not, at that time, fully recognise what he has achieved. What he had achieved, he'd found that defer-logisticated air he had obtained was insoluble in water, and that a candle burned in it much more brightly. Back to Anton Laurent Lavoisier. Realising the significance of Priestley's discovery, Lavoisier confirmed and extended the study of a const constituent of air that supported and took part in calcina calcination and combustion. This he first called vital air, the purest part of the air, and later gave it the name oxygen. In 1782, with a ma massive piece of apparatus, he had designed to yield a continuous stream of oxygen. He was the first to succeed in bringing about the melting of platinum. On September the 30th, 1774, the Swedish chemist Carl William Skill wrote a letter to French chemist Antonia Lavoisier. In the letter, Skill asked Lavoisier to carry out an experiment involving the purchase of a fire air oxygen by means of a burning lens. Skill also asked for Lavoisier to inform him about the results of this experiment. So this is basically how platinum was melted. They were having problem with just the lenses on their own melting platinum but when oxygen was added as shown in this really grainy 
picture I'm about to show you. Oh, what could this fire air be used for? So what I'm showing you now are pictures of rocks and what I suspect to be ruins of old buildings um, that look like they've had extreme heat or have been melted. And this is just up the road from me in Paul and Dorset, where we suspect it to be an old star fort. That is brick melted into rock. That is brick melted into rock. See all the scorch marks? Melted. This looks like where it, the point of impact, where the heat could have been. I don't know, but you've got scorch marks. So look, it's all burnt. Clearly see that's man-made, so that's a brick. Again, looks like it's probably been melted, but that is man-made. to fight.